Talk about radial nerve compression syndromes. There are really two that you need to know the most about. Let's start up here higher proximally. Remember that the posterior cord gives off the ra radial nerve. So that means the posterior aspect of the arm with the triceps and the posterior aspect of the forearm, everything on the posterior sides of those should be innervated by something that comes off the posterior cord, aka the radial nerve. That's a great way to remember it. Let's start off with the first one that is uh, more proximal, which is radial tunnel syndrome. This is also called PIN syndrome, supinator syndrome, depending on which paper you read, so it can get confusing. But essentially, it is entrapment of the posterior interosseous nerve. So as we can see, here's the radial nerve coming down. And it, as it goes from the arm to the actual forearm, a transition zone here where the superficial branch comes off. So the superficial radial sensory branch comes off and travels over the supinator while the posterior interosseous nerve dives deep to the supinator. The first compression site we need to know actually is the radial cap capitellar joint. So here on the other di diagram, you can see sometimes there are fibrous uh, adhesion scar tissue that can compress the PIN as it's coming through to transition from the arm to the forearm. That's labeled as two here. So the fibrous tissue here anterior to that joint, that's one of the compression sites we need to note. Another potential compression site is actually the proximal edge of the supinator. Now this is also called the arcade of Froche. This can get thickened and very uh, uh, sharp in certain people, particularly people that do a lot of manual labor or lift a lot of weights. This is classically known as the arcade of Froche, which is testable. They like to test eponyms, but they're trying to get away from that, but they still do it. So here's the proximal edge of the supinator. Just like the proximal edge can be a compression site since the PIN is diving deep to it, the distal edge of the supinator can also be a compression site. And you can see here on this diagram, here's the arcade of Froche, that proximal edge of the supinator. You can see it can obviously compress the PIN because it's traveling right underneath it. And the same thing here distally. Other potential compression sites is the radial recurrent vessel, the R artery, sometimes also called the leash of Henry. These eponyms are classic PIM questions and also testable questions. So when this radial recurrent vessel comes across the posterior interosseous nerve, it's better shown on this diagram how the PIN goes right underneath that radial recurrent vessel. If this is for some reason, if there's some uh, vascular pathology or if the vessel is enlarged for whatever reason, there can be compression of the posterior interosseous nerve by this radial recurrent artery. So again, we've got the fibrous tissue anterior to the radial capitellar joint the distal and proximal edges of the supinator muscle, the radial recurrent artery, and then last is the actual, here's the extensor carpi radialis brevis. This edge can actually be, this muscle can be uh, enlarged in, uh, particularly in a manual labor or some of the lift weights, and the edge can compress the PIN. The most obviously common one is the compression of the proximal edge of the supinator or the arcade of Froche. So if you're not sure which test question, and it looks like a PIN syndrome or radial tunnel syndrome question, the arcade of Froche is most likely the compression site. Remember that this is innervating all motor and also sensory to the dorsal wrist capsule. So the PIN syndrome will present with weak extension of all muscles of the forearm. That includes extension carpiatus brevis, longus, APL, EPB, EPL, so basically all finger and wrist extension is gonna be weak, depending on how severe their palsy is. It may be completely absent. In addition, at the compression site, so if there's compression of the PIN nerve here, here's a little note that also basically tells you if you push on the compression site, there's gonna be an increased pain. Most of the time these patients will complain of pain after a long day of work, doing whatever job it is that exacerbates this compression. So usually they tell you there's pain right at this certain point, distal to the lateral epicondyle. Traditionally, it says the three finger breadth. So if you put three fingers like so, distal to the lateral epicondyle, there should be tenderness here at this compression site. So that's your PIN, radial tunnel, or sometimes also called supinator syndrome, depending on what you read. Next up is more distally is Wartenberg syndrome. So again, remember we said that the radial nerve will branch, there's a deep branch, which is the PIN, and then the superficial radial sensory branch will run on top of the supinator, and eventually it's gonna pop out underneath the brachioradialis. So right here, here's the brachioradialis, and here's the extensor carpi radialis longus. When that superficial branch comes out in between two of these muscles, 
there can be like a scissoring or chopping action on that superficial radial sensory branch. So compression of the superficial radial sensory nerve in between the ECRL and brachioradialis can cause Wartenberg syndrome, which is basically a sensory, purely sensory nerve compression syndrome, where there will be tingling and paresthesias in the superficial radial sensory branch, which is the thumb, the dorsal radial aspect of the hand, and the index finger in the radial side of proximal radial proximal part of the long finger. You can obviously tap here. You have a positive Tunnell sign over the exit site. It's usually nine centimeters proximal to the styloid process of the radius or the radial styloid. And, so, and you can be careful not to confuse this with uh, tenosynovitis because they can both have a positive Finkelstein's test when you trap the thumb and bring the wrist this way just due to the fact that that nerve will also be stretched because the muscles will be pulling. All right, guys. Hopefully this is a good review of some radial nerve compression syndromes that are frequently tested.